Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kuboman. Today's video, I want to emphasize a video that I made in 2016. It was fairly popular uh, because it talked about unknown factors and unknown issues that you may encounter during your tech support. So this video is going to be help good for help desk or desktop support, uh, tier one help desk, tier two help desk. All of the stuff that I'm teaching is all real world experience and it will kind of go to, goes to show that I made this video in 2016 and I'll show you a screenshot uh, that I actually have done so. My point is that I have a lot of experience in working in IT, so what I'm doing is actually sharing my knowledge for free with everybody in the world. That hopefully they can learn something from it and benefit or even get a job from it. I really hope that's the case here. That being said, if you like my content, please click the like button. I really appreciate it. That's the only thing I asked in return. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And with that being said, let's take a look at this video that I made in 2016. Keep in mind, it's a little bit slower pace because at the time I was still kind of fresh when it comes to making videos, but it's an excellent video because it touches on all kinds of different things from access issues to websites not working to outlook issues. A really good video. I hope you like it. Today I want to talk about very specific things that are related to desktop support issues that are being reported to you as desktop support personnel and this specific issue is always presented to you and i don't mean in a specific uh, trouble ticket that you receive but in specific uh, manner the trouble tickets are presented to you meaning that they are very hard to understand for example you get a ticket that just says i do not have access to something random for example a website or um, access to some kind of a drive or some kind of a folder or some kind of an email but the tickets are very vague sometimes so you cannot determine what the actual cause is because user simply cannot explain it in an efficient manner and I understand this can be very frustrating sometimes um, you know dealing with users like this customers like this but it is important to stay calm because this happens uh, more often than than some people may realize uh, before they apply for a desktop support type of position so again it's incredibly um, important to be understanding as well you know because some folks don't simply don't understand um, you know computers I guess in the way we do right I mean that's just being realistic it doesn't mean that they are not better at other things than we are okay so let's say for example you get you know a trouble ticket says I do not have access to this drive so let's go ahead and pull this up right I don't have access to this drive and so there are a few things that could be you know that, that that could be causing the issue and we just don't know we just kind of have to go through the motions with this user in order to you know effectively and you know troubleshoot this right so we have to ask questions for example do you need access as in do you need permission access meaning that um, let's say they have a network drive installed for example like right here let's pretend this is a network drive this is this root of C and so we need to ask them do you actually need access as in being able to enter this drive right because if they don't have access permissions access to this specific drive they when they try to select this it'll just say access denied right they'll get a pop-up right or do they need simply this network drive mapped right so in this case we would just simply map the network drive right we would just simply add it pick whatever they want and you know that would be that sometimes user thinks that access is simply that right not being able to reach something rather than not having you know permissions access right but at the same time you will get you know a, a trouble ticket that says i need access to the z drive right so what is the z drive we don't know right especially if you work in a well you know most likely it will be a big organization that you work for you know in desktop support um, but you, Z drive could be anything, right? That is my point, right? What is the Z drive? So you have to ask him for specifics about it, right? Which Z drive? What is the name? What is the actual name of the Z drive, right? We could, 
we could name it anything. We could pick any letter, but if you don't know the folder path or you know the network path for this drive, we, we just simply would be just guessing. It could be anything, right? But again, it's important to be you know calm and dealing with these type of situations because this comes up up all the all the time. So we would ask him for specific. Is it share drive? Is is it called that? Is it called share drive? And which specific folder do you want it to be mapped to, right? So we need to get these specifics for them, but all they simply were stated is we need access. I need Z drive. I need access to this Z drive. But it could be any of those things. It could be you know permissions access or simply just adding it so that they have it installed of course when i click here it's it's not actually going to add it because it doesn't exist so i'm just going to cancel out of that but same goes for you know different type of situations that you may encounter it could be saying uh you know simple things like i don't have access to this website right we, we don't have i don't have access to the website you know, making it sound like it's a, you know, a computer issue when in fact it might be just a website issue, especially if it's an external website. So um, the user might be looking at this screen basically that just says the page cannot be displayed, right? User could be simply looking at this. So let's have a look at these images here that we found in Google, right? User could be looking at any of these things, right? The page cannot be displayed. The page cannot be displayed. Um, the page cannot be displayed, right? These are just one of those things where user might say, I don't have access to this website, you know, assuming that there is something, you know, at, you know, at their local PC that's causing the issue when in fact the, the page simply doesn't exist, right? This is typical 404 type of page where page doesn't exist. So we have to get this type of information, um, you know, this type of information and kind of take it as in like, you know, we, we simply have to research, you know, more into this in order to figure out what's causing it. In this case, chances are that user simply has the wrong link, right? The user simply has the wrong link. We have to ask them that, you know, has, you know, ask them, is, is it, is it, did, would this start today or do you how often do you access this website and, and especially if it's one of those things is it, one of those things that are you know that user doesn't access on a regular basis chances are that this link has changed right but we don't know that because agent or agent or agent user or your customer simply did not provide enough information for us to you know resolve this type of issue right and that's the whole point of this video you know kind of being able to you know have the means not well not just the means but the you know patience to deal with these type of issues quickly because we need to get more information to resolve their issue as quickly as possible right another example is you know outlook outlook issues where you know missing email right missing emails right this type of thing you know will come up often too or and, and that could be caused by many different things too you can look at it um you know in many different ways we just have to get more information is it the archives that you're missing is it actual email that you're missing from your inbox if it's an archive you could simply be they could be simple situation where you just add the, the you know the archive file to their email fold to, to their email right um, you know that the PST file you would add it in, in, into their Outlook and they would now have access to their archive and then but to them it could be just email you know or they could be even say I'm missing a folder from my email and they could also be archived too but again it could be something that's missing from their inbox as well right it could be something that's missing from their inbox as well let me see if I can find the screenshot of that here we go so here's uh, an example. It's a little bit blurry. Let me see if I can. Oh, I hope this doesn't take me somewhere weird. Okay. Uh... Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go back. Um, I just need a screenshot of, of an inbox. Here we go. 
I think this is it, right? So in inbox, right? And within inbox, you could have multiple folders, right? Anybody can just add folders and you can have a bunch of different, you know, folders. Well, chances are that user simply deleted the folder or uh, deleted the email, as you can see here, or simply dragged, dragged their folder that's underneath this, you know, usually underneath the inbox and dragged it into God knows what, right? We simply don't have enough information, but they, all they say is, I am missing emails. I'm missing this and that, you know. But if they are, if they did delete, just to kind of throw this out there, if they did delete their folders within their inbox or their, their emails, um, you would have to have access. Um, I mean, it depends how long ago it was deleted, you know. It depends how long it, it could be simply just located in their deleted folders, right? It could be just simply located in their deleted folders, deleted items, like right there, for example. You know, this is. I believe this is an older, probably Outlook 2000, 2007. Okay, so it could be simply deleted in there, but if it's permanently deleted, um, you may have to um, have access to the Exchange server, which is the email server for Outlook, right? So again, my point of this, um, it, almost a ramble, if you will, is that this type of issue will come up all the time in desktop support situations. So you have to have the patience to deal with this because as soon as you start getting frustrated you will overlook many things that that you would know how to fix that you normally would know how to fix so it's kind of it's it's very important to stay calm and 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 just kind of concentrate and be to the point and don't let the um you know you have to kind of take control in 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 a polite manner by asking the right questions of the user to provide so you can provide an, an effective solution to them and an efficient an efficient solution to them you know all right guys thank you so much for watching if you have time please go to facebook.com forward slash couple man like my page also i have a website called cosmicnova.com if you like technology news and and, and science um science articles um, you can go visit that as well thank you guys so much i appreciate you very much well there you have it friends i hope this is very educational and very useful to you most important very useful if you like this content and you appreciate it and you feel like i've deserved your subscription please subscribe i really appreciate it thank you so much and i hope to see you next time take care